So, uh, is this the law of unintended consequences, I suppose you could phrase it? I suppose you could put it that way, yes. I mean, I, look, any time you're going to disrupt a market, any time you're going to increase costs for provision, you're going to increase risk, there's always that chance you're going to drive up costs. And whether that's by 3%, 5%, 10%, we yeah. can't really say at the moment, but it's inevitable that if you increase those compliance costs, yeah. a certain proportion of that is going to be passed on. Of course it is. And, you know, obviously we, we await, if you like, the manifestation of what happens mm -hmm. when these rules come in. Um, but I think many people from speaking to your colleagues at NRLA, uh, NRLA yesterday and others, uh, it, it, it seems that, as you rightly said, that word disruption... Uh, which never really ends well, certainly not in the short term, potentially uh, could mean more people are looking for homes. Uh, if you've got certainly homes of multiple mm. occupancy, there's a problem right there. If a landlord sells up, that's not one, but maybe four or five people that have got to look for a new, a new place to live. Property could be in short supply because the landlords are legging it and therefore potentially the rent goes up. I mean, it could be as simple as that. It could be, and I, I should say that we're encouraging landlords to keep their heads. This isn't an exodus, but it is a decision point. Landlords are looking at what's happening. There's been a huge amount of uncertainty for a number of years now. You know, we've known this reform is coming, yeah. but not in what form, not on what timetable. And it's the latest of a number of different things. You know, we've had changes to the way that landlords are taxed, changes the way that, uh, that planning applies to property, lots of things that have really added to that cumulative load mm. on landlords. And yeah. You know, we know already there's not enough housing out there to meet demand. Anything at the moment that's going to make it, you know, that little bit less likely to be viable, let's face yeah. it, that little bit less likely to be profitable, is going to make members of my organisation think, well, actually, I'm making 45 or 5% on my rental portfolio. Yes. I've now got the risk that my tenants might move in, change their mind, serve yeah. me notice and walk away. I've got the risk the courts might not grant me possession when I need it. Yeah. I'm going to look at that and think, well... I can take that investment, I can take it elsewhere, maybe I'll get a lower risk investment, or actually I need to mitigate that risk, I need to price it in to my tenancy cost. Correct. I think that's the worry at the moment, it's going to be that priced in risk. It's just a simple business decision, I've got to charge slightly more in case things go wrong. Yeah, absolutely. And if you are thinking of getting out, uh, then of course you run another potential risk with capital gains tax, which we Very true. could be the, the north end of sort of, you know, 50% potentially in the coming months. So uh, you might have made, uh, you know, 10 grand on your house since you bought it a year ago, but five, five of that's going to go to uh, the, the exchequer by the looks of things. Very true. And I think we can't forget that actually capital gains tax was changed earlier in the year with the last budget of the last government. Yeah. And although that was billed as a reduction in rate, actually we've gone from a situation where you were allowed generously to make around a 10k gain in a financial year. Yeah. That's already been reduced down to free. You know, we're already wow. looking at a situation where the rates might be slightly lower than mm. for other forms of income. But actually there's not that tax free allowance that you get with your with your wages. It's an interesting area, uh, and uh, uh, almost, you, I think you could reasonably argue, Chris, that the government, this one and the last one, because they were all planning pretty much the same thing. I know it kind of came to a halt, but Michael Gove was, you know, talk, talking about many similar things. That the focus on this one area of of, of British life, uh, life in general, business, commerce, whatever you want to call it, does seem wildly disproportionate. It does. It does. And I think it's because, I mean, if you look at the history of in investing in, in property to rent, you know, it's taken the place of other investments. Our members, by and large, have got into the market either full time as a business or quite often to plan for their retirement. And it's because other retirement vehicles, other pension investments yeah. have failed over the years. Yep. They've gone for something very tangible. They've been encouraged by governments of every colour, frankly, over the last 30 years, to invest in this nice, safe investment, yeah. to do something good, to provide homes, and to make an income from it. And actually, now the tables are being turned. Yeah. And I have every sympathy for people whose rents are going up. I have every sympathy for the government wanting to encourage aspiration. But actually, it's at the cost at the moment of that housing provision yeah. and the cost, crucially, of that pension provision. 
We were talking to one lord, landlord yesterday because naturally whenever we discuss this, there is a school of thought, you know, landlords are the pirates of bricks and mortar. They're all stinking rich. They own 7,000 properties and spend most of their time in a hammock in Barbados and all of these kind of urban myths that get thrown out there. Mm. You know, one guy just simply said, look, I had to have my entire heating system replumbed, a new boiler and all the rest of it. He had no problem with the principle of doing it. Mm. And windows as well. He's trying to get the rating up to a C because there's another requirement in addition to all the other rules um, and that was only part of it even that didn't do it but he said the entirety of what he spent on just those two things meant literally zero profit from that house for the next 18 months because that was the cost it's so he's going to get no rent it's going to cost him about 20 grand to do all of that and his rental income was about 12 so it's not a, not it's not a, an industry to print cash by any means it's not it's not uncommon at all and, and don't get me wrong i'm not suggesting there aren't landlords out there that own their properties outright and are making a reasonable living but actually by and large a, a private landlord in england or wales has yeah. got one to three properties they are probably making an income of less than 25k a year from that portfolio and they're spending at least on a given year 25 percent on maintenance and that's before you bring yeah. in these reforms so, sorry did you say 25k and then another five on maintenance yeah, roughly, yeah, roughly speaking. Yeah. I mean, it's going to depend on your portfolio. And that's out of three properties. You need to be budgeting that that 20, 25% for, yeah. for maintenance if you're providing good quality homes, yeah. which you know we hope the vast majority of landlords are. But that's before anything goes wrong. Yeah. And and that's I think where the concern is with these reforms. You know, I get the motivation, I get the policy, but actually it's taking away some of those safety nets. Mm. And Absolutely. it's meaning that it's going to be very difficult if things go wrong. Yeah. Um it's uh, i mean the, f the future is if nothing else challenging i think is the right word chris thank you as ever for your time really appreciate that